Hey guys, welcome back to this course on memories in VLSI. In this video, we are going to see the write operation of SRAM. In the previous video, we have learned about the read operation of SRAM cell. Uh, and in this video, we will start with the write operation. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. So as we have seen uh, in the previous video, uh, we have uh, zoomed initially that Q is zero. So then we understood how to actually uh, read the Q uh, as zero itself uh, from the bit line right now we will also assume again that q is zero and but we want to write a one to the cell which means what we want to make q one it is zero initially we want to write a one to this okay so the normal operation is to write how we want we can write through these bit lines that's the only access that we have for now. If it's a multi-port uh, SRAM cell, then we may have separate um, uh, lines for uh, read and write, which we will discuss later. But for a 60 SRAM cell, we have only bit and bit bar through which we can read and write, right? So this word line, if we assert this word line, um, we can uh, write into this uh, cell. So both of these bit lines are pre-charged high right we have a pre-charge operation and evaluation operation now pre-charge is done earlier so both the bit lines are floating high as we understand so now what we have to do is we assert this uh, word line so uh, this one will be returned to the skew is it is it what is going to happen absolutely no why because from the read constraint we have understood that we will not be able to make q high because we will make this d1 strong enough that it will not allow this q to go high through this access transistor a1 right so we that ratio is actually read stability so this is not possible so are we not be able to write one to this thing at all well no that's not what it is because we have other ways to do it right because this uh, inverter has an influence from this inverter so what we do is we write a zero to this qb right we write a zero to the q bar so obviously if we write zero here then this zero will turn on this p1 p must run this star, so that will make this uh, one right so that is how we can do it so if we want to do it how can we do it if we want to pull this q bar down so if q initially was zero then q bar was actually one right so how can we pull this um, q bar uh, to zero the option is to uh, pull this q bar down not through this d2 but through this access transistor a2 because we want to write to this uh, cell we want to write a one here and a zero here right so we need to give in in evaluation phase we need to give specific values to this bit and bit bar when uh, in preacher state both were charged to uh, the pre-charge to high they were floating high but when you want to write the uh, data you give specific data to whatever uh, it has to be written to that uh, uh, cell right so in bit bar the q bar has to be actually uh, zero right if q has to be one so we give zero to this bit bar okay and now uh, if we are giving zero to this bit bar then we can pull this QB down here. So, but the problem here is that um, you see that initially the Q, Q bar was one. How it was one? It was through P2. P2 was, um, it was charging this node up. It was charging Q, Q bar up through the, it, it was connecting the VDD to this thing. So it was connected, this this was charging it up. So that's how it was kept at one. But now we connect this to, right? This Q bar to this uh, bit, bar, bit bar line, which is a bit line. So to which we want to pull it down. That's what we are trying to do. But P2 actually opposes it. We see, right? This P2 opposes it because it, it is, trying to we try we are trying to imagine this way we are trying to empty this bucket and p2 is trying to uh, fill this bucket so that's what is happening this p2 is opposing our action of pulling this q bar down so what has to happen is p2 has to be much much weaker than that of uh, the access transistor a2 
right so if this is the way if that is what happens then we can actually pull it down below to turning on this p1 transistor if this p1 transistor gets turned on by pulling this down then uh, this becomes one the q uh, raises to one and then again uh, this this if this is one then this d2 transistor will turn on which uh, which will it completely pull it down and this will be turned off that's how we can make uh, we can write a one to this q even though we could not do it from this side but we could do this from this side but uh, there is a constraint right that is called a writability constraint. That writability constraint is nothing but um, P2 has to be much weaker than that of the uh, A2, so that the uh, so the Q bar has to be pulled down. So this is called as writability constraint. So uh, as I said, this operation will also happen in uh, two phases. One is the pre-charge operation, and the second one is um, uh, the write, read or write operation. So now let's understand how the right drivers work because we told that uh, this bit has to be made specific uh, value, right? When this word line is raised before that, after pre-charging is done, one of these has to be pulled on. For that, we use right drivers. As you can see over here, so what happens is right drivers uh, pull the bit line or its complement low during phase one to write the cell. Either it will pull, in this case, uh, example that I have taken it had to pull down the bit bar right this was supposed to be uh, pulled down uh, so how do we achieve that let's understand uh, in this case uh, in this configuration this entire thing is actually acting like a right driver right so uh, in this case what happens is uh, if it has to pull down bit bar then the data s1 the data select line that uh, is chosen here is nothing but zero if zero is given here this inverter will convert it into one so this zero will not turn on this nmos transistor so this is fine this this thing is fine but zero made one here will turn on this transistor it will keep this transistor on and now you you uh, give this uh, right enable here so both of these transistors are on which will pull this thing down right this uh, bit bar will be pulled down so if uh, you want to uh, pull uh, the q bit actually uh, bit down then you can set this to one so this will be off and this transistor will on and we, if you make this right enable here then it will pull down the bit so this is how the uh, the right driver actually works so right driver can consist of a pair of transistor on each bit line uh, for the data and the write enable right so this is for the data and this is for the write enable so it has pair of transistors like this or it can have a single transistor driven by specific combinational signals so it is possible that um, it can have a single transistor but an external uh gating and all those things has to happen so that it uh it gets turned on only once like it, it gets turned on properly right so that has to happen otherwise we can have two uh transistors like this as well but in any case the series resistance of the right driver which is this entire right driver bit line wire this entire bit line wire right and the access transistor this a uh, the access transistor must be low enough to overpower the PMOS transistor in the SRAM cell. That's because uh, if we don't have this uh, uh, resistance low for this case, what happens is the, you know, as I said, right, if the resistance is not low for these cases, including this uh, right driver, what happens is we may not be able to empty this bucket quickly. So it gets, you know, uh, filled up very quickly by this uh, p2 so that's what we want to achieve we want this this resistance to be low enough so that uh, you know the the this bucket which is nothing but uh, current flowing here will happen very quickly and it gets emptied and the voltage uh, here goes very low so that it it turns on this p1 transistor so that is what we need to make sure the resistance of this path is always uh, low so that uh, it will be able to overpower this p2 transistor and some arrays use tri-state drivers uh, to improve writability by actively driving uh, one bit line 
high while the other is pulled low so this is about the writability i hope you understood uh, the what is write op how write operation happens in sram and what is this writability constraint and how are we going to actually write because we saw that we couldn't do the writing operation in this way and through this way uh, if we have to write a one here but uh, if yeah if we want to write a zero here it's obviously possible but from one here it's not possible so we need that constraint that qb uh, has to be pulled down this here so to do that we want our access transistor to be a little stronger which means the p this pmos transistor has to be a very weak one so if th that happens we will be able to uh, write uh, uh, a zero here and uh, a one here right so that's what the write writability constraint is so i hope you got all these and uh, i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and bye bye